The chilling sounds of a day America will never forget. Those are newly enhanced Dallas police recordings from the assassination of JFK nearly 50 years ago. If you'd like to hear more of this vivid piece of history, we have a link to them at cbsnews.com, or you can download the Kennedy Half Century app. Perhaps one of the most historic pieces of evidence from that day was the limousine President Kennedy was riding in. What happened to it after the assassination is yet another incredible chapter in the story, as Dean Reynolds explains. Here it is. And this was the day he was shot. To see it now is still jolting, all polished and presentable without a hint of what happened 50 Novembers ago. Belatedly armored and topped and bulletproofed. The tragic Lincoln limousine at the end of the road in the Henry Ford Museum here in Dearborn, Michigan. Matt Anderson is the curator. The 50th anniversary of the assassination has really, really drawn people to that car uh, for longer periods of time than is usual. To peer into the back seat is to ponder what might have been. Jeez, I just, yeah. I mean, I can just see him right there. Yeah, oh, you can, yeah. Totally picture, picture them there. And I think that's what a lot of people do when they come to visit the museum. They'll stand here and just sort of stare in that space and think about what happened. The car, as Kennedy knew it, was not armored in, in any way, shape, or form. The, the tires were not bulletproof. There was no bulletproof glass. It did have a removable plastic top, but again, it was just plexiglass. There was no, no bullet resistance in that material. It, it's amazing to think of it, but uh, they just didn't anticipate that kind of problem. Codenamed X-100, the limousine, with all its tragic evidence, was flown to Andrews Air Force Base a few hours after President Kennedy's body. They drove it. Back to the White House they did. that night? That night to get it back into the garage to start their investigation. Death. Wow. They determined that the most practical thing to do was just to rebuild this existing car rather than to start from scratch. So, yes, they took the car down to the frame and uh, rebuilt it as, as a true armored vehicle. The biggest change they made in, in modifying the car was putting in a permanent roof that, that could not be removed, and they surrounded the whole vehicle with bullet-resistant glass. And then they put it right back into the presidential fleet. People are always just stunned when, when I tell them that this car was used, and indeed used until 1977, so many years after the assassination. Presidents Nixon and Ford rode in it, as did Lyndon Johnson, who was two cars behind Kennedy that day in Dallas. He did use it, though I've, I've read time and again that he was not comfortable riding in this car for obvious reasons and, and only did it if he had to. And when he first saw the car, he took one look at that blue and said, uh, no, we're, we're not going to have that. It was just too evocative of the assassination. So uh, they painted it black very quickly and, and black it remained. And then President Nixon had requested they actually cut a hole in the roof. So as the car exists today, there is a hatch there. He can remove the panel, stand up and wave to the crowd. Did he? He did. There are photos of President Nixon doing Doing that at his inauguration. But this car will forever be associated with a different motorcade. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And a different president on a much different day. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Dean Reynolds, Dearborn, Michigan.